Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, TEDx Mahe, for having me on this platform to get a chance to share with each one of you. As soon you hear about silk, what comes into your mind? Saris, apparels, luxury, right? Grand, festivity. But what if I say that silk has many more applications and many more potentials beyond apparels and textiles? That is what I'm going to talk about today. Now, I will also tell you the life journey of a silkworm. Silkworm is one such organism whose every part is important and which leaves kind of no residue. I will start with giving you an example. Uh, there are about 300 to 400 eggs which a female, uh, you know, moth pr uh, produces. Out of that, within two weeks they hatch and once they hatch, they start growing and their only food what they eat is mulberry leaf, white mulberry to be precise, mora salva and of course some other variants. They shed their skin almost four times in their cycle. They call it instar, first instar, second instar, third instar, fourth instar, post which silkworm, it becomes a larva, I mean it becomes a full-fledged worm, what it grows and that worm, then it stops eating, it creates a pupa, the process of metamorphosis. If you see, it goes through wonderful process of various metamorphosis and that's what lead to, uh, you know, from an egg to a moth or butterfly, post which it stops eating, that is typically around 34th, 35th day and it creates the pupa and around that for next 48 hours, through the sheer force of its movement, it creates that cocoon. It, it generates a liquid out of its salivary glands, which as soon it contacts in, in air, it becomes a hard surface, that is the silk protein what we know and it has two proteinous parts which I will be touch basic post which it forms the cocoon, that cocoon is, I mean, is such an amazing material that still we are unraveling the secrets of it, various secrets of uh, silk cocoons. To get the thread, the worm which is inside the cocoon is put in boiling water and the thread comes out and that thread is almost 700 to 1000 meters which is used for textile industry. But when I looked at all of this, we decided to work on a material, what happens when the worm comes out of the cocoon? What is left is an empty cell. In the natural process, silkworm after forming the cocoon, it secretes an enzyme which breaks the cocoon and it emerges as a moth or butterfly. Then the typical male-female mating, generally females are little larger than males and then they produce the eggs and the normal life cycle process. What is the starting material? It's broken cocoon which is considered a waste for many people. This I am taking you to the various process and before I move the slide, I want to tell you an interesting fact. How many of you know that silkworm is not having any eyes? Silkworm can't see? So that is an interesting fact about silkworm, it can't see, it does everything with its antenna or with uh, the ability to smell things. Now. Silk is one such example which fits perfectly with circular economy. When I say circular economy, I am sure many of you would be aware, but to put it, put it to a perspective, simple word can be regeneration, where you produce, consume, recycle, reuse, repeat. That is the cycle with minimum wastage, with reusing it so that it is sustainable and it is friendly to the environment and to all the ecosystem in, the, in place. When we look at silk, it is a perfect, perfect example of circular economy. Why? Silk vomits mulberry leaf. If you look at mulberry, the sheer positive impact of mulberry on the environment cannot be ruled out because it eats mulberry leaf and mulberry is one such twig. You plant a twig, you harvest the leaves, again it will come. You again harvest, again it will come. You do not need to and with minimum care of the plant, it can survive. And Mulberry leaf itself had excellent anti-diabetic property. That is something which you will find interesting that many Korean, Japanese and China, they drink a lot of mulberry leaf infusion, which is known to bring down the sugar level also. Post which, the, when the cocoons are produced, 
we started looking at beyond textiles and when we looked at beyond textiles we got into the silk you know where we are not killing the silk worm we are just taking the natural broken cocoon once it is out of this uh, worm is out, once the moth is out of this thing that broken cocoon is what we took and before i move forward you would be happy to know that it since it's a natural material it is perfectly biodegradable it doesn't leave any harmful or toxic left out and even when any medical product is developed out of it it produces minimum pollution all the people say that it's a highly polluting industry and other kind of thing there have been mixed reviews but when you look from a circular point uh, economy point of view the impact it can create is huge then we moved into the production where you pro you take out various protein the next uh, then the next slide i will show you how the silk protein extraction happens then you get to hospitals in when it comes to hospital you treat various types of in wounds example in india 3 crore births happens every year and out of which 19.3% in rural area and 33% in urban area put sorry 47% in urban area happens via cesarean and you know that cesarean can be life threatening also and cesarean is also very people are careful about the scar which is an after effect silk can be used to bring down that scar or minimize that scar that's where there is a specific protein which helps in bringing down those scar with higher healing also and importantly it's a concept of waste to wealth i will just elaborate little bit normal cocoon when you see go to the market it varies between 400 to 700 rupees kg but when you look at broken cocoons what it's consume it fetches somewhere around 2 and 1/2 to 3 times the value ranging from 1800 to 2500 so isn't it the case of waste to wealth what was supposed to not generate any income for the farmer is able to generate so much income for the farmers or the people who are growing it all this fits very well in the circular economy because there is no wasted and even after the products made of silk that can perfectly biodegrade that can incinerate well and that can be used to create multiple impacts here what i have highlighted is the process of silk extraction we all went to 8500 years back how silk was discovered then we came to 6500 years back when silk route was you know established then we came in 13th 14th century and now i am moving into early late 19th and early 20th century before 1945 silk was used as parasut ropes because silk is the strongest material known gram to gram silk is more a uh, silk strength is more even compared to steel there is a famous saying one gram steel silk is stronger than one gram steel the sheer reason is the beta sheet structure which can take hold the pressure of 0.5 gigapascals so that's the kind of uh, strength silk has it's a material which is lustrous which has excellent tensile strength and which fits very well with the economical perspective of circular economy as well as waste to wealth generation considering all this we moved into the scientific aspect to create various products and solutions which can fit in an economic multiplier potential so what we did broken cocoons using method of temperature and pressure we were able to extract the outer part is silk cocoon is 95% protein 70% a protein named as fibroin and uh, 25% is sericin you see first part that is sericin that comes out from the degummed cocoon and when we say degummed cocoon the sericin part is removed post which through a process of dissolution and various filtrations and some optimized processes we are able to get silk fibroin and concentrate it to a particular level which is relevant to specific type of wounds whether it is infection inflammation moisture diabetic wounds pressure ulcer bed sore cesarean or scar and using that silk cocoon this is how the products you saw that how silk fibroin is being extracted out and silk cocoon then you know is derived into various other forms and casted using various method into various types of products when we look at products for example we all know that india is diabetic capital of the world almost 14 crore diabetics to take approximately 7 crore diabetics and 8 crores borderline diabetics and 25% of them develop some or other kind of wounds 
which it becomes very difficult to heal. Now, this is where it demands and there is also a surprising fact which I want all the young minds who are sitting over there for them to deliberate. 85 percent of medical devices are imported in India and India is second largest producer of silk in the world. There is an ample opportunity for each one of us to add value, create lot of positive impact and ensure that lot of uh, economic multiplier potential, lot of value, lot of, uh, you know, lot of good things can be brought out of this ecosystem where it adds lot of value. Now I will highlight what is currently used when it comes to wounds. There are various methods, wound care generally. Wound care is classified into three parts. One is traditional wound care, second is advanced wound care and third is active wound care. When we talk about advanced, uh, traditional wound care, it is wound care where you just cover the wound with a bandage to prevent from any outside, uh, you know, to prevent it from any outside intervention. Second comes is the advanced wound care. In advanced wound care, you create a passive environment. For example, you create an environment where the wound gets the moisture and body does the heavy load. That is advanced wound care. Third comes the active wound care part, where you particularly provide an nutrients or provide a material which actively participates in the wound healing process. And that is what silk protein does. Silk protein is an active material which participates in the wound healing process. Currently, Lot of products are being used. One of the most famous products is collagen. I am sure all of you would have heard about collagen. Collagen is derived from slaughterhouse byproduct. And the way collagen works is once it is you cast it into a seat, you have to put it in isopropyl alcohol. And before application, you have to dip it in saline water so that the alcohol content comes out. And what is left out is a product you know which can be applied. While in case of silk, you don't have any such intervention. It's a material which can tolerate heat, which can, which is much more stable on heat, which does not require any special care. Just you open the packet, apply it. Thirdly, it is something which promotes healing in a much quicker manner. And also when you look at the healing matrix, collagen starts working on proliferation stage. When we say proliferation, it is when one cell attaches to each other, while silk starts working on inflammation stage. When we say inflammation stage, inflammation stage is a stage when your body responds to a particular wound or cut and there will be some swelling, redness and some, the area will be a little heated. Silk starts working at one stage earlier than collagen, that is inflammation stage. And that is also one of the contributing factors why silk has much better scar reduction ability compared to collagen or any other material. Looking at all of, apart from that, the decree, when you use silk, since it's a material which is locally available, which has much more value, can be even can tolerate heat up to 60, 70 degrees, the control on the material is much high. And because of this, the products which can be derived out of silk proteins have much better shelf life, much easy to handle. It brings down the load on the hospitals, nursing staff and the treating surgeon, apart from being contributing to the circular economy contributing to the economy of the country, the world, the nation and the growers in general. This is a material where a lifetime work can be dedicated. Still what we know about silk and silk proteins, the small organism without an eye doing such a miraculous and fantastic things. What we know is just a drop out of the ocean. There is a huge path which lies ahead in terms of various non-textile biomaterial application of silk in the area of wound healing, tissue reconstruction, blood vessel reconstruction, including various types of hemostatic property in terms of even the ability to hold food which can last for longer period of time, including bringing down the cold chain for vaccines. Lot of good work is happening across the world in terms of research. And the onus is on people like us and the young, young minds who are sitting in this crowd to take this legacy forward to ensure that, you know, what the science behind a concept of silkworm, what it does, you know, in terms of thread, what is fit for emperor clothes and is also fit for healing wounds can be taken into various areas. So I leave the stage open for all of you to deliberate how we can all contribute to the growth of the 
world growth of the nation, growth of the state, growth of the village, and growth of each and of you. Thank you.